Okay, welcome to episode four of building a website using Visual Studio 2022. In this video, we're going to continue using Microsoft Identity in our product and uh, we're going to modify the template as requested. So if you don't remember what the template was, um, here's, an ex here's a brief example of what that is. So we've got a database and we've got the registration form. And on our database, we've got a username, an email and password entry. Uh, we did have more than that, but those are the main ones we're actually going to be focusing on. And on our registration form, we've got an email and password. And again, on the registration form, we also have a confirmed password, but we're not focusing on that. We're only focusing on the information that's actually being transmitted across. So the way that this kind of works is when you hit that register button after filling in all the text boxes, the information from email then gets transferred across to the database in its username and email fields. The password will get sent to the password, albeit the password is actually encrypted so that the administrator for the database does not have access to the user's password information, which makes it really secure. And that works really well. But what we're hoping to do is we're hoping to add a couple more fields to our registration form. So we're going to add a first name and a last name to our registration form. Well, I think you can probably see where the problem is now. So when I hit the registration button, the information from email will go across to username and email, just like before. The password will move across, but there is no place for the first name and last name to go. So what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to rebuild the database so that it'll accept this information of first name and last name. So we're going to put those two in as fields. So it's really important that we focus on the database first. Once we've actually got the database in a state that we can start transferring information across to it, then we can focus on the registration form. And that way, when we press the register button, the email will send information to the username and email, the password will go to password, and then the first name and last name will go into the respected fields and we'll all be happy. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's just go through that again. We're going to introduce the new fields to the software, the first name and the last name. We're then going to rebuild the database to include both fields. Then we're going to edit the registration form to include the two new fields. Once we've done that, we're then going to test the solution. We're just going to make sure that it works. And then all being happy, we should be able to go straight on to demo three. So. Let's move straight on to demo two, updating the standard version with alternative fields. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just open Visual Studio 2022, and we're gonna run the last application that we created, the demo one application. That allows you to log in and use the example at example.com in my case. You could have called yours, whatever you want. Okay, let me just run it again, just so you can see it. Just gonna wait for it to come up on my screen. There you go. So um, hopefully you've got that working. I'm just going to close it again. We're going to modify the registration form on that. So it's not just the email address and the password. We're going to also add the first name and last name to that. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to introduce some information to what we've currently got. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is we're going to go into this area up here. Let me just... Uh, and you can see it's called identity. So I'm going to open that up and we've got pages and we've got view start. Okay, so in the areas section, I'm just going to add a new folder. So the new folder, I'm just going to call it data. Again, the name of it's not really that important, but I'm going to call it data because it just makes sense to me. And inside of data, I'm going to create a new class. Now classes are something that I cover in um, other programming modules but if you like to think of a class as an object uh, as a complete object that's what we're going to be creating now in um, in identity we've actually got a class already created it's called identity user and that's what contains the uh, those those registration credentials so the email the username and the password what we want to do is we want to extend on that. So we're going to create uh, another class and I'm going to call it app user. 
and I'm going to make this an extension of identity user. So to do that, all I need to do is put in a colon here and then type in identity user, like so. Now you see that it's got this squiggly line underneath it and just underneath it, potential fixes, control, full stop. So I'm going to do that and what that does is it gives me a suggestion. So it's going to be using the Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity Library. So that's what it's doing. So I'm allowing it to do that. So at the moment, this line reads as the app user and it is an extension of identity user. So the two items that I want to add are going to be the first name and the last name. Now I can type it in public string and you can see it says username. We're not using username. We're going to be using first name. So I'm going to do that for this case. And then the, uh, the get and set. Now I can do it that way and that's fine. But one of the ways that you will actually learn to do this in Visual Studio is if you type in the word prop and press tab tw twice, it actually tries to fill it in for you. Having said that, because of the software that we're now using, let me just get rid of that and press return again. You will see that because I've chosen to use first name, it's assuming that I'm going to use the last name. So if I press the tab key, it's immediately allowing me to do that. Now what I need to do is see this identity user, this bit here. I'm going to right click on it and go to find all references. All these references, they need to be replaced. They need to be set up as app user now. So, because we're using app user, not identity user. So it's really important that all of these are switched from identity user to app user. Now this shows you the references. However, there is another way of doing this. Now, if you used, um, other applications, you'll probably know that if you use Control F, that brings up the find. And that if you use Control H, that will give you the find and replace option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the system to look for identity user and replace it with app user. Okay, I want to make sure it's the entire solution. If you've run this for the first time, you might find it only says um, all documents or current document or something like that, or even current block. Um, I want it for the entire solution. And then simply this button here will replace the next one. It will go and find it and replace it. This one will replace all. Now leave this app user open because what will happen is the identity user in the app user will also be replaced. So you need to take that back. So I'm just going to do yes to change all. Just wait for it. There you go. 30 occurrences replaced. Then go back to app user and just change that back into identity user. That's That should be fine. Okay. So now that's removed the instances of um, identity user. I'm just going to right click on there a moment and we're just going to have a look and see if we can find all references. And the only reference should be within here. So if you look at the, um, the, the file, it's this app user.cs. That's the only time that it needs to refer to identity user. All the others should be done. Okay. Then what I want you to do is go over to program.cs which is open just up here. And you will find that in there, can you see that it's got a squiggly line under it? That's because it doesn't know what's happening with it. So let me just check to make sure that everything's okay with that. Okay. There you go. So that's what it should have. Demo1.areas.data. That gets rid of that squiggly line. All right. So it's really important that you um, do that with that one. Let me see if there's any others. Uh, application context. So your application context is in your data. So you've got application db context.cs. So we're going to open that one up. Okay. Um, it's gone a little bit wide, but we're, we're good there. Um, now that's currently running 
as you'd expect it to. This is this is basically what's creating the um, the instance of the database. The um, it's, it's making sure that all the fields are present. So actually, if I what I'll do is I'll run that now and see what happens. So I'm just going to do a quick run of demo one and let it fire up. Oh, we've got some build errors. Okay, so I wonder what the error is. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's saying that it doesn't like the fact that app users being used in some of these files. So what we're going to need to do is go into each of these files. That's saying non-nullable. We don't worry really worry about that. It's the login one that's causing the problem. Okay, so this is the um, partial login. So that's found in your views down here. So we go to shared and it's the login partial which was there and you can see straight away we've got squiggly lines under those that's because they need to be identified in your library so again control dot using demo one areas and those squiggly lines should disappear just like that okay so let's close that we might need to reopen that later on okay so let's run this um, again Actually, make sure we've covered everything down here. Yep, those are the only areas. So we'll run it again. Okay, and hopefully it should fire up. There you go. Okay, so we fired it up. It seems to be running okay. So we've got no errors in the system. But what about our database? Let's go and have a look at our database a moment. So to go to the database, you go to Server Explorer and then click on this icon here which says SQL Server Object Explorer. Click on that and what that will do is that will show you your databases. So I'm just going to drop down there, go into databases and here's the database for demo one. Now the database is made up of different things. The, the tables is what we're really interested in. So we're going to go into tables and the users are what we should be looking at. Okay, so I'm going to go and have a quick nose in there. So I'm going to go to view data and you'll see that our example examples in there and if we scroll it across there's no reference to first name or last name so I'm, going to, I'm just going to close that so what we need to do is we need the system to create the well we need the system to rebuild the database okay now to do that we use a an area up here in tools called NuGet and we run the NuGet manager console. So simply open that up and you'll be presented with this with PM and a flashing cursor. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a migration. So I'm going to create add migration and give it a name. So in this case I'm going to have um, add first and last names. That's what I'm going to call it. Okay. And then hit return. So it's building it. It's succeeded. It's done it. Brilliant. However, let's go and check to see what's happened with our migration. So over here on the right, can you see where it says add first and last names? That is the, uh, the migration that we've created. So if I double click on that, this is it here. But there's nothing being built. It's not identifying those two new uh, fields that we've asked for. Okay, so that's no good. So that, is, that won't actually do anything for us. So as it says here, you can remove the migration by using that tool. So I'm just going to remove migration. That gets rid of that migration. This will disappear just like that. Okay, so let's go back to that context. Oh, that's not the context. Uh, let's do it from over here. So it's, it's this one here, application DB context. So this is still referring to that identity, but we want it to do that. But what we want it to do is we want it to use our new app user. So by using these two symbols here and typing app user in the middle. What it's doing is it's in explicitly saying let's use the app user uh, class and again control dot 
and use that just to get rid of the squiggly. So what it's doing, this this basically is just you know, showing the system where to find this app user. Okay, so demo one areas data, showed you that before. Okay, so we shouldn't need to do anything more with that. So I'm just gonna save it. And then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna run that migration again. So I'm just gonna, you, you can only add the same name as long as there isn't a current migration with the same name. So I'm just gonna hit return. It should build it quite nicely. And look, if you look in there now, you'll see that it's actually allowing these columns to be added. Okay, so as long as you've got those, you have no problems with updating your database. So the, the instruction to use there is update database and then hit return. And what it will do is it will rebuild the database to ensure that you've got those two pieces of information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our server. I'm going to go to our database. I'm going to have a look in net users and I'm just going to open that up and go to view data. Now if you look we've still got the example at the top there but if I move this cursor if I move this screen all the way over to the right you will now see that we've now got first name and last name. So we've achieved the first part of that goal which is to build the database to ensure that we've got first name and last name. Fantastic that's the first thing done. But now we need to start building the rest of the program because when I run this, so we'll run it up now, and I go to register, we're still using email and the two passwords. We don't want that. We want it to include the first name and last name. So let's do that now. Now. At the moment, the only thing that we've got visibility on under identity is this view start, which is nothing at all. Okay, it's not a lot. So we'll close that. In fact, I'm going to close all of these because we don't need any of these open now. So let's just get rid of all of those, like so. What we actually need is more of the um, identity files, the files that we were using. If I just run that up again, and if I just go to register, we want to be able to influence this page, but we can't see it. We need to be able to see it to do something with it. So the way to do that is to right click on areas. I mean, you probably can right click anywhere, add, and then go down to new scaffold item. So a scaffold item is something that's already been pre-built by Microsoft. We're going to go over to identity and we're going to add identity to our folder. So I'm just going to wait for that to fire up. Okay, so once that's uh, done, we'll then, be we'll then be introduced to some options. So the first thing you need to do is just make sure that you point the views to the shared file. So I'm just going to go to layout. That'll do. Okay, so this is the, uh, the layout page and that's where the layout page can be found. Now you can click on this button here and it basically allows you to override all the files but the ones that we're going to be interested in is login, logout, manage index, register and I'm just going to have register confirmation um, and that should be it. Now the data context class is this file here application db context but it will come up if you just hit this down button here so you can see it's application db context and i'm just going to simply add that and what it will do is it will make those files available to us in identity pages so in a second you'll see this get populated with more pages there you go so we've got some more pages here and if I go and click on account you can see that we've got a login, logout, register and register confirmation. We've also got a manage area in here. So the first thing I want you to work on is your index. Now I don't want you working on the index itself, I want you to work on the index CS. So to get to that, this little arrow here on the left, 
just click on that this is your index CS HTML dot CS okay so I'm gonna go and click on that and as you can see this is now a C sharp application but you can see straight away it's already using the app user it's not using the identity user and had you introduce these before you did the um, introduction of app user you'd have a whole load more identity user um, lines to replace which isn't great so as you can see you can scroll down we've got some information here now again I'm not going to get into the whole C sharp thing because that's not what this lesson is about this is about you just being able to do this task so this area here is what's using the um, uh, the models themselves and the two models that we're going to use they're going to be the um, first name and last name so what I've done is I'm just going to simply pop those straight in okay so we've got uh, required data now what required basically means is that something needs to be entered into that field to be used okay the data type is its text the display name is first name and the actual uh, name of the the variable is uh, first name okay so that's that bit done that's done in the input model okay it's really important that you make sure that those are put into your input model there is also a phone number currently there but I wouldn't worry too much about that for the moment right then we need to go down and find the async task load async so the async task load async is this one here and you can see under the um, the input model we've got a new input model and it's just a phone number we also need to add the, um, the first name and the last name to that now I've already created it make sure you put a comma at the end of that line and then paste them straight in that's what I'm going to do you can write them in if you want it's entirely up to you but that's basically just making sure that when we input the information it knows what to do with it so in that case it's it's uh, it's filled in for you okay now there is one other area you'll need to go to which is the async task on post so this is what happens when we press the, the register button okay so we need to find that so here we go this is the on post and we've currently got the uh, phone number as I said to you that's not really that important but what we do need to add is the uh, first name and the last name so I'm going to pop those in like so let's just wait for a moment I'm just going to copy and paste it straight in I will list these in the um, in the description so you can just copy and paste them in if you want to obviously if you've chosen to give them different names then you're going to have to use those names I'm just going to pop these straight in like so okay so and I'm just going to put a space between these two so that it stands out a little bit so we've got input first name what this is basically saying is if the input of first name does not equal the user first name then make sure that the input first name does equal the um, the user face first name so it's a kind of what um, ensures that there's the information held within um, is not empty okay so that is all you need to do for the index under manager now that we've updated the index uh, CS HTML CS we now need to do the HTML itself so I'm going to go into there and we've got um, a couple of options here we've got username phone number um, I've also created a copy and paste for this as well so I'm just going to press return and paste it straight in now, I'm not particularly happy about the way that it's done that so I'm just going to get rid of the there you go get rid of these spaces before so you can see now that I've got first name and last name okay so now that we've actually created the index page we now need to do the um, the same with the register page so I've opened up register page here 
and we've got this section here which is uh, user create user what I want you to do is get rid of that okay and what I want you to do is to pop in this okay so this is creating the input uh, first name and last name. Now you'll see that we've got these squiggly lines. Now that's because we've not actually stated what the first name and last name is. So we need to come up here and simply add them to our input model. Okay, so I'm going to make those available to you, but they were the same as the ones we used in the index, like so. Okay. So they should be fine. They should work okay. Uh, actually, I don't need any of that. Okay. So now if I scroll down, the squiggly lines will have disappeared, as they should have. So the next thing we need to do is open the register.cs HTML view folder, uh, view file, sorry and we need to update that so that it contains the two inputs that we need for the first name and the last name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and this is the email password and confirm password. So what we want to do is just above the, um, the email, I'm going to add the first and last name. So I'm just going to copy and paste those straight in like so. Okay, and they do look identical to the um, the email except some of the wording but again I will make those copy and paste um, available to you too so you should be able to just update that so that's now sorted out the the register form so if I save that and run it let's see what happens okay so it's working fine We'll come over to register and as you can see I've now got first name last name email so what I'll do is I'll pop in Fred oh no thanks don't want to go in there miss key Flintstone and we'll go at F Flintstone at bedrock.com pop in a password pop in another password and hit register okay and again confirm the registration right what I'll do is I'm just going to close that we're going to go over to our database and we're going to go and have a look and see if it's updated with Fred Flintstone so I'm going to go right click view data so we can see Fred Flintstone's here but is the first name and last name in there there you go first name and last name so that's how you update the registration. In the next demo, I'm going to show you how to do this from the very start. Okay, so as though you know exactly what you're going to do. So we'll do that as demo three. Okay, thank you.